Okay, in this video, I'd like to prove Wien's displacement law. So anybody studying a course in quantum physics, one of the first things you'll do is Wien's displacement law. And Wien's displacement law says that lambda max times the temperature is equal to a constant. Alright, and I'm just going to find out the constant. It's equal to 2.9 essentially times 10 to the negative 3. Alright, now... What that physically means is that if you have a black body curve, all right, and on the black body curve you might have your, uh, you might have your, we'll say an energy density, it doesn't really matter, all right? So I'm going to say u is equal to energy density. And on the, on the bottom, on the x-axis, you have lambda, and you're plotting energy density versus lambda at a constant t, constant temperature. You'll find that the curve might look something like this. That might be one value. And as you start increasing, you're going to get different curves like this at different temperatures but the point is that as you change as you change we'll say these variables you're always going to be getting a constant and you're going to be displacing the curve by a certain amount that's what's called a displacement uh, a displacement law okay because everything we'll say the the product stays constant and if you change one of the variables then all you're really doing is shifting the shape of the curve all right so that's what Wien's displacement law is now I'm going to assume, I've assume a couple of things. Okay, the first thing is that you know what an energy density is. And if you know what energy density is, you'll know, let's say, I'm going to define u lambda is equal to the energy density per unit frequency. And that's defined as 8 pi hc, h being Planck's constant, c being the speed of light, divided by the wavelength to the power of 5, and multiply that times 1 divided by the exponential of hc over lambda kt, K being Boltzmann's constant, and take away from that 1. That is the energy density per unit frequency interval. All right, and it looks like a horrible, a horrible function, and to be quite honest, it really is. So we're asked to find, uh, we're looking to find Wien's displacement law. So we're going to find the maximum of this black body curve. And for that, you're going to need a small bit of calculus, or differential calculus. And we, we should know from differential calculus that for a maximum or a minimum of a curve, you need to differentiate and you need to set to zero. Alright, and that works for all curves. If you, if you have the functional form of a curve, you need to differentiate it and set it to zero. And well, there's another, there's another test that you can do in order to find out whether you have a maximum or a minimum. Something which you're not going to do here. So what we need to do is we need to differentiate this function here. So what we need to do is get d lambda of u lambda. Like that. Alright? And that's going to be equal to dd lambda of my big horrible function here. 8 by hc lambda to the fifth times 1 over my exponential minus 1. Like that. Now for those of you that are a small bit switched on, you'll realize that we're differentiating a product, so we need a product rule. So I'm going to define in this product here u and this v. I wish you know that it's u v prime plus v prime or plus v u prime. And that's going to be equal to the product. So we need to differentiate one, multiply it by the other one fixed, and, and swap that over. Add to that the, the, the would say the, uh, the procedure swapped. So, let's go ahead and do that. So you need to be a small bit careful here. i let you worry about it, but I'm just going to give you the answer, okay? So we're going to find that d u sub lambda d lambda is equal to 1 over the exponential minus 1, which is that, that, that whole thing there is v, multiply it by the differential of here. Okay, now we realize that 8 pi hc is a constant, so I'm going to write that 8 pi hc, that's my constant, so I can't differentiate that, and we need to multiply that by the derivative of our argument. In this case, it's 1 over lambda to the fifth, or lambda to the negative 5, like so. That's, uh, that's v u prime. We need to add to that u v prime, so u is 8 pi hc over lambda to the fifth 
multiply by dd lambda of 1 over the exponential minus 1. Now what do we do? Well, it's time to start doing a differentiation. All right. Now I'm going to tell you that in order to differentiate this here, uh, we need to we need to look at it quite carefully. Now we need to look at the exponent on our exponential. So with the exponential we have is e to the h c over lambda k t. All right, minus one. And we're trying to get d d lambda of that. So we're getting d d lambda of an exponential whereby lambda is in the quotient of that exponential. That's a bit of a pain. So I'm going to show you how to do that separately. All right. So first of all, d d lambda of h c over lambda k t. That's the exponent of your exponential is equal to d d lambda of h c lambda to the negative one over k t. And that's equal to hc times negative 1 over kt lambda squared. All right? So remember, your, uh, you remember you're dropping down by the power and uh, you're, you're, well, I'm not going to go on to uh, laws of uh, differentiation. So that's, that's how you will say differentiate that, that exponent. All right? So let's go ahead and apply all that. I'm assuming you know how to differentiate your lambda to negative 5 here. So that whole thing is going to be equal to 8 pi hc over e to the exponent minus 1. Multiply that by negative 5 over lambda to the 6. We need to add to that 8 pi hc times negative 1 over lambda to the 5th. Okay. Then we have 1 over e to the exponent again, minus 1, all to be squared, multiplied by e to my exponent, times our final der 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 derivative, which was hc, over lambda squared kt, times negative 1. And yes, that is absolutely horrible. However, I'm sure that at this stage your differentiation is pretty good. So, provided you see the answer as it is like that, you'll be able to figure it out. So, let's just rearrange this formula. So, if I use my green biro, if we rearrange that, and just being very careful, you're going to find that it's 8 pi h squared c squared over lambda to the 7 times kt times e to the exponent over e to the exponent minus 1 all to be squared. And that's going to be equal to 40 times pi hc over e to the exponent negative 1 lambda to the 6. Like so. Alright, the last thing we need to do here is prepare this for an Excel document. Alright, because you don't really solve this in by hand. So, if I let x equal to hc over lambda kt you're going to get the following that the whole thing becomes 5 times e to my exponent again minus 1 all right um where, excuse me and that's going to become we'll say e to the x and that's going to be equal to x times e to the x so what you have to do here basically is plot this in Excel. I'm not going to do that. Obviously that's something you have to do yourself. Okay, But down to here is perfectly correct. It's something I've done my, myself on Excel and it can, it, it's, it's, quite, it's quite straightforward. Okay, so, okay. so how do we finish this off? Excel will give you a value for x. And Excel will give you two values. It will say either x is equal to 0, which clearly is the minimum of your function, our x is approximately 4.9. We said a moment ago that x was equal to hc over lambda kt, and that's going to be equal to 4.9 for lambda max. All right. Therefore, lambda max times t is equal to hc 
over 4.9 times k. Alright? So all we did basically is manipulate that. Brought, drop down my x, bring up t, and leave, uh, bring up lambda as well. Because we know at this stage this is lambda max. Okay, just manipulating that formula. And if you plug the values of Planck's constant, speed of light, 4.9, and Boltzmann's constant in, you're going to get an answer of 2.8 times 10 to the minus 3. Alright, so it's not as painful as it might potentially be, or as at least as it looks. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.